Namaste and welcome to Sri and Kira exploring the mysteries from live. <laughs> New Delhi, India. Uh, welcome, beloved. Oh, hey, Namaste, angels. You know we are uh, so excited to be with you, and it, and it's really kind of fascinating, Sri. Despite the, it took us almost four days to get here, and despite the jet lag, we are so enthused about the energy of this moment that. It is really a blessing to be here with you right now. Absolutely. And today what we're doing is we have recorded this. It's a live recording made today. But it is made today. <laughs> but due, due to the 11 hour time zone difference, right. we're going to actually upload it as a pre-record for you. And uh, so we welcome you to the live pre-recorded show. Hey, <laughs> Does and, I think they say live on tape. <laughs> live on tape. That, that's it. That's it. And so we have lots to share. And I want to begin by by just saying to you, we are delighted to connect with you once again. Oh, it's an honor. And uh, we are broadcasting today at uh, the Oneness Talk Radio YouTube channel. We're broadcasting at Facebook's video channel. We're broadcasting at TFR Radio. Uh, the TFRlive.com. Yes. Yes. As well as Oneness Talk Radio. So. Dot com. <laughs> So welcome, everybody. We're, we're delighted that you are with us. We really are, especially in this moment, Trey. This is an incredible, well, this moment connected to the prior moments has been quite a magnificent time. You know, and there is a lot happening. So Shri and I really felt called to do a special teaching segment this weekend. And the reason being is that I'm sure you're already experiencing this, that November full moon illumination, which is permanent. Remember, that is not just a transient moment. And I think that's really important yeah. for people to remember, Shri. You it's, know, it's like right off the bat. This energy is ushered in by the Mercury retrograde to the full moon, to the new moon that is quickly upon us. And what is happening is going to accelerate or magnify and actually allow to become present that which you intend to be. And it's also a awakening that which may try to stop you. Uh, and this is why we really want to offer a, a two, th this whole weekend. Remember tomorrow, if you're catching us live, Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passion and action at noon Pacific time, this is two teaching segments that weave together. So what are we weaving together and why is this important? Well, as Shri and I just started sharing, that November full moon illumination, which was a permanent, think about that, in this month, September, uh, excuse me, November 2019, that November 12, remember the, the whole month is this weaving of the Maya, uh, excuse me, of the, of the moon energy, this, this beautiful feminine energy with the harmonic of the Mercury retrograde that is now in the post retrograde phase. However, this new moon coming right into the mix is profound. Now there's two secrets to navigating this moment and we are gonna explore secret number one today and we are gonna explore secret number one tomorrow. What are the two secrets? Number one, how to navigate the shifting timelines. I mean, really understand it, how to pay attention to it, how to notice it and to anchor it. Because right now, those parallel timelines are wobbly. That is because of this new moon. This new moon is a pulling energy. It's like a vortex going, come here, <laughs> right? So what's pulling you? And, and the key is, how is it pulling you? Are you being pulled into your mastery or are you being triggered? And that's why tomorrow's show is going to be all about the triggers that are seeking to stop you and how to witness them, navigate them, helping yourself and helping others. Yet it all begins with the recognition of these shifting timelines. And this is a biggie because the illumination that has come forward from that November 12 full moon is calling you and it's showing you everything. And that, that's kind of a mixed blessing, isn't it? When, yeah. when you see everything, it can be a little triggering. Well, <laughs> and, and, and this energy, both the empowerment boost from the full moon together with this crystallization of yeah. creation that's yeah. coming through with the new moon, 
Your freedom, your ability to co-create has never been more empowered so true. than now. And I want to offer you a little uh, conversational possibility. How many of you in your lives have said, there I go again, uh, there I did it again. You know, it's, it's like- Or why is that happening again? <laughs> yes. And, and that sense of being stuck in yes. uh, unhealthy or hurtful patterns or tra traumatic re-injuries. We are so powerful in our co-creative capacity that we set in motion repetitive injury, we set in motion repetitive defeat, mm -hmm. and repetitive fear. Right. We do this, we create it. So the number one thing to just let in is what if what you dream about, what you want to be for yourself, if it's aligned with your authentic mission and who you are, what if you just held on to that in your vision? What would happen then? Well, I got it. I have to jump in, Shree, because it, that immediately reminds me, and it's still on our website. It immediately reminds me that if you honestly, I mean, sincerely, if there's a, a piece in your heart and a piece in your soul that's saying, I, I'm really ready to do this. I am saying yes to myself. I am saying yes to my divine mission. I am saying yes to who I am. Then with all our heart and soul, please go to shereenkara.com, right on the homepage, look for the Divine Director's PDF. Mm -hmm. it, it says right there, the Divine Director's through Angelic Oracle Kira Ra. Read this. And, and at the end of it, one of the things it says is read this every day. And Shri and I have been reading it every day. And what I can share with you is that it opens with the anchoring of imagine a world where with every breath, every minute, all you see in those around you is the highest aspect of who they truly are. Doesn't matter what's presenting, doesn't matter what the emotional body or any of those other little bodies are trying to say, but if you can hold that for others, then that is all that will come back to you. And that is how you also begin to anchor a timeline shift because we all recognize the mastery within as we anchor in the truth of our divine presence. And this is a big, big moment. Now, you know, you know this, what Trina and I are teaching right now is truly timeless, whether you're with us live, whether you're gonna grab this a year, two years from now in the archives, it's relevant. What's relevant in this moment is the recognition, the recognition. Remember those three energies mm -hmm. of November, right? We're in that final one, which is the recognition, the recognition of all of this, of being able to see the big puzzle picture and bring it into focus. You know those little uh, things that you used to get as a kid that you put up and, and they had the- Viewmaster. The Viewmaster. I loved the Viewmaster. Okay. Take that as your metaphor. Here's, yeah, here's two, two, two timelines. And one of them's focused a little further than the other. And, 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 and in the Viewmaster, exactly. that's how you get the uh, depth of field. But let's look at this from a metaphysical- <laughs> such a great example. <laughs> from a metaphysical example, we are running parallel timelines all the time. Which one has the most light? Therefore, which one is the most attractive? Right. Call, calling forward the most energy and fulfillment. This is why I open by saying, what are your dreams? What, right. is, what is it you choose to manifest that's in alignment with your soul's mission? Because that's an important ingredient. You've got to get the soul's energy behind it. This isn't just about picking out a pretty car at the supermarket, you know? This is about living the life of your dreams. And these parallel timelines begin to coincide with the one that has the most energy and light. You, as a co-creator, by holding the vision, by holding your heart open with passion and purpose and, and, and show, asking your guidance, show me more. You know, I wish to inspire and infuse this with light. By doing this, you are energizing the highest potential timeline for yourself. This is so simple, yet it is challenging because most people do not keep coming back to the highest potential. They get triggered, which we're gonna talk about a lot tomorrow, yeah. and in the trigger, we loop out. And, we, and, and, and exactly, and, and that's, that's really important, even that word, we loop out. Remember that all of these, let's kind of back up a little bit. So for those of you who are saying, I have no idea what timeline I'm in, I have no idea how to shift parallel dimensions, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, 
the first thing that Shree and I want to share with you is let go of the Hollywood version of what this looks like. <laughs> now, seriously, you know, because the Hollywood version of shifting timelines, of going through all this stuff and what it looks like is just that. It's Hollywood. It's an illusion of an illusion of an illusion. And, and how many of you are impacted by a visual of a distortion that's been shown to you, thereby it's stopping your own recognition. And we're right here, right now. That's why we're sharing this with you. This week ahead, specifically, if you're listening to us in real time or, or over the next week, the week, this, this culminating week of November is all about recognition because we are heading into choice. And it will be that window of time between the new moon, which is coming right up like two days away, right? Between the new moon, we're already in the shadow of it. And that's why we're going to talk about the pull and the end of the month. Yes. All right. Yeah. So there is the choice. Let us not forget that this, uh, November was a month of choice because December is bringing us into greater awareness. And we're going to be talking about that next week with all the revelations. Awareness, experience, and choice. These are the cycles that consciousness goes through in its expansion. And we begin to nurture any particular aspect that's before us right. and, and cultivate greater understanding, greater witnessing, and greater empowerment of it. So we are at the opportunity where you can really make a choice. Right well, now. and it, I, I gotta say, it brings us back to your loop. I, I don't yeah. wanna lose that train of thought, Shreve, okay. because where you're at is really important, but I think it's, I think it's also important to to share about these loops. Well, uh, yeah. Because awareness, experience, choice is another loop, it's isn't another it? Loop. And we're always in it. And, and that's the key is that if we let go of this Hollywood version of, I have no idea what you're talking about because I don't have a DeLorean to go back to the future or I don't have whatever <laughs> to, to shift a timeline. What, what this is really about is, is that rich opportunity to notice what you're noticing. Now, guys, this is all going to go back to that other cycle you talked about, the awareness experience choice. We are all, every being on this entire experience, we are always interconnected. And, and let me share with you, because a lot of people ask you where Shreen and I get this information. Well, we primarily receive extraordinary information regularly through all of the beautiful Ascended Masters, the Divine Directors, all of the angelic beings around us. And when I had my first near-death experience in 1989, when I died of cancer, during my NDE, what I was blessed to experience more than witness, I, it was an experience, I was very aware of the etheric energy of the totality of the I am on what felt to me, what, what visually felt to me very much like a floating lotus, like a crystalline lotus energy. And there was this huge spiraling crystalline, I, I, I called it Godhead. You, you can have whatever name, creation, whatever, it, it let go of words, right? But there was this beautiful spiraling, gorgeous energy and it was captivating. And what was so beautiful was, as I was literally in the cosmos, what I saw was this sense of deep connection all around me from heart to heart to heart was this beautiful, like crystalline light that we were all, and it was infinite. It had yes, no yes, beginning. Yes. It had no end. But what was so beautiful was that you you're constantly connected you're constantly spiraling and so through that recognition what i was directly shown through direct experience was that we are all constantly spiraling and sometimes that spiral brings us closer to that infinite godhead presence and sometimes we're out further it's all part of it but you're never disconnected ever no matter what, you just might be spiraling in a different zone, so to speak, is the easiest way. And one day, I promise I will find someone who will help me illustrate this and put it into a graphic. And if you know 3D graphics, call me. We really need to do this. And so what happened during my NDE was as I was taking all of this in and being shown this, then what happens is that in, in any lifetime and many times, we become very close to the Godhead and it's still our choice. 
and we can go in and merge, which I did, and, and I can share more about that, or we can, we can keep the journey going. There is no judgment. There is no sense of right or wrong. There is only the sense of the divine awareness, experience, choice. And this was so viscerally and tangibly entered and, and reflected in. And the reason that I'm mentioning it to you right now is that you are always spiraling. The key is, are you on a spiral of upward illumination or are you spiraling into, it's not that it's down, it's density. It's that spiral, it's, it's not a question of, I'm going up or I'm going down, I'm failing or I'm succeeding. What it's saying to you is that, or what it's, it's inviting you to recognize, right? We're in the recognition moment. What it's inviting you to recognize is that you will notice if you become aware, because true mastery only begins when we hit awareness. So if you are aware of the discernments of the refining spiral and the densified spiral, that's how you first wake up to multiple time dimensional experiences. And this is how those loops, because they're literal loops that you were mentioning earlier, come into focus. Remember, we're here right now to share with you that in this moment right now, there are two secrets that you need to learn. And, and if you learn them and you relax the Hollywood version of what you think it looks like, which is usually why you think you're not experiencing it because you're thinking, right? <laughs> if you relax out of that, you will discover that you have been shifting quite a bit. And, it, and, and Shreya, I think the other part is, is really recognizing that letting go of the fact that you think you can't or that you don't uh -huh. know how, or that you also feel like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Those are all self-defeating behaviors and limitations, yeah. right? It's really important Ooh. that you you really touch the boundary of going crazy. Yeah, and, and that boundary uh, is is one that is you're going to touch it periodically throughout yeah. your evolutionary process. Very true. Because who is it that's going crazy? It's not you. It's the mind, the peanut brain. It's, it's the, the peanut mind. brain. It's the mind the, and the identity with the mind of limitation. So. Metaphysical concepts, when we're using words to describe right. something, sometimes they're a little difficult to wrap around. However, the experience that we're attempting to describe through words is available to all, whether you think you understand it or not. So I want to jump in and also share that with respect to really understanding how to be in the timeline shifts, and, and really they're more like parallel dimensions. and. We have been talking about this all year. This is a massive culminating moment right now before we hit the next cycle of awareness. Remember, 2020 is actually going to start December 1. And that's another really profound energy. This is, it's not about, I mean, December 31 is going to be its own energy. I'm not saying it's not about that. And as a matter of fact, make a note and join us. We are going to be doing a worldwide broadcast on New Year's Eve from live, live at Tosa Blue Mountain. We will be home in time and, and just back from this journey. The reason I'm sharing about December 1 is that the choice you are making, the choice that is upon you, is inviting you to call it forward with conscious awareness because you're making a choice whether you're aware of it or not. And that's the mastery experience in front of you right now. So let's let's dive into these parallel timelines. And in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking about the new moon effect on these parallel timelines. And this is why we're using words like it's a pull. Mm -hmm. It's very much like a, a pull into the into the energy of this new moon. And just as the full moon of November brought together all of that mastery illumination, and remember, it's permanent. This is an ending. It's permanent. The key is, are you choosing to see it? And so with that mastery illumination that is now fully in front of you, one of the gifts that you're being invited to pay attention to is to recognize, again, the loops, the, the, the energy of the ascended presence, the energy of the densified presence. Think of it as a clockwise or a counterclockwise. You're not off the clock. It's just what direction well, are you going? Yeah, but it's a little bit... You could call them side trips. Yeah, yeah, you sure, know, why not? Uh, instead of, side trip. Instead of thinking hierarchically, right. perhaps just in your mind's uh, understanding, 
we have our centered life, which is aligned with the divine, right. aligned with oneness, right. aligned with the authentic energy of your soul. And then these outer peripheries take us further into density, yes. further into diversionary experiences. And this is a lot, I, I want to use the movie theater example again. When you go and see a movie that it really triggers you emotionally or you lose yourself in the movie, yeah. and I bet we can all relate to that. Oh, totally, right? You're, you're on a side trip. Yeah. You're, you're on an illusionary adventure. And sometimes those illusionary adventures, it actually inform you. Actually, you come back to center a little later on, you go, hey, I learned something or I gathered a discernment. You know, I gained from this. And this is, this is when you give yourself that gift, Sri. I mean, I'm loving that you're sharing this because when you give yourself that gift of, of that discernment, what you're really saying is I'm becoming aware. Mm -hmm. Remember, mastery begins at awareness. And in order to fully anchor the gift of recognizing, right? We're in the recognition moment. In order to do that, you need to free yourself to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. And this brings me to something I wanted to mention earlier, and I'm a little dry, I think I'm a cough. <laughs> Excuse me. The Hollywood version. You know, when we when Shri and I talk about anchoring into your new parallel dimension and timelines, there are many people out there that talk about all of the negative things or all of the conspiratorial things that may seem a little more thrilling. Uh, however, you do realize that all they're doing is captivating you into that reality. I want you to breathe that in. So anytime you're listening to all the conspiracy, anytime you're getting all worked up, anytime you're getting all argumentative, anytime you're having to prove a point or do something, you're anchoring in the zone, in the time frame of the one who is pulling you out of your mastery. You know, it's not easy to anchor mastery, guys. Ashri and I get attacked constantly. So what? You know, it, it's no big deal because it's not who we are. It bounces right off because that's not the timeline we play in. And so the key is, where are you ready to anchor? And, you know, if you're watching this show, if you've hung with us this far, then chances are there is a piece inside of you that's saying, hey, hello, are you ready? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, right? Yeah. And so the key to recognizing that is to pay attention to the expansiveness. You know, one of the things that Shri and I can share with you from a very physical standpoint, and forgive me, guys, I keep watching our timer because we don't want to, um, okay, we have about five minutes in the segment left. So if you've been following Shri and I for a while, Shri and I, or, or watching our shows, we, we have been actively anchored in a, in a, in another parallel frame. And in that parallel frame, this is what we look like. And for those of you that have been uh, writing us, we've been very, very grateful with all of the, Oh my God, what are you doing? You guys look amazing. You look incredible. Uh, and we, and we honor you and we thank you for that. But all we are is modeling what this parallel is what we were supposed to look like. And when you start gazing at that, when you start paying attention to that, when the little subtleties and these little subtleties started, remember early in the year, right? Remember this time portal shifting has been happening all year long. But what we've noticed is when you really start saying, okay, I see that in this experience, you know, and it was after we anchored that Sri had his near death. I mean, we all know that Sri very blissfully is still on the planet with us. But that last March, that was a question that this beautiful community helped answer. And we said, yes, in that moment, we were all in that port, that parallel timeline, because in this parallel timeline, Shri had to be basically 40 pounds thinner. He needed to be this more vital. He needed to have all of this extra ex energy going on. Similar with myself, um, after assisting Shri through his transition, my physical form has been uh, dramatically shifted. My eating patterns are forever shifted in ways that are extraordinary. I'm living on very little food and I'm very happy with that right now. And, and the I that is happy with that is the I that exists in this dimension, in this parallel. In this parallel, there are people we are now meeting, there are experiences we are having, and I can share with you just we have only been in India a day no, and, and slept through not, most not of Not even 24 not hours. Not even 24 hours, guys. We got here at 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, 
So we've been here about 13 hours right now, India time, maybe 14. And what we have noticed already is the extreme amount of people we've met, the connections we've had along the way, yep. and the way that things are just lining up it's is positive, beyond positive, magical. Positive experience exactly, after exactly. The there, there is a heart awakening. And what we're Huge. seeing is this mirroring of, of light meeting light, love meeting love, positive intention meeting positive intention. And one of the things, the reason I stress this is we are manifesting and witnessing what, it, what happens when we fully surrender to our highest timeline in common right and in combination with saying yes we have consciously had the conversation of oh so this is what living in this timeline looks like yes have you given yourself that gift and if you don't think anything has changed yet are you ready to start waking up to it because mastery begins with awareness and in the second half of the show today we're going to be diving deeply into how the new moon is going to try to pull you back we're also going to be talking about a little bit about how those triggers are coming in but that's all of tomorrow's show and really how to navigate that through this mm -hmm. anchored shift into recognition what were the three energies for november respect as dearest reverence remembrance yes. of the truth of who you are and the recognition that you are the master of this experience right now we are going into a massive choice and i just want to share that for all of you that are hanging out over at tfr live we know that we're going to be going into a break very shortly here but you really want to hang out with us because for the second half of the show there is a lot to share regarding this information now, before we do go away for that break, let's all bring our hands to our heart. Hmm. Take in a deep breath. Let it out. So. And just feel the gift of you. Hey, breathe again. Let's all breathe and let's welcome ourselves into the gift of this divine moment. And I also want to say, hey, welcome back TFR Live. We are so glad you are with us. And with all of you, thank you for being with us right here, right now in this profound energy. And in this energy, I want to remind you that we are at the moment where you can really dive in and learn how to shift the timelines and maximize the shift while identifying the triggers that would seek to keep you stuck. Now, now take that in, right? Breathe, breathe that yes. one in because that's what we're going to talk about in the second half of the show today is how you can dive in and start shifting your own timeline. And it is an oxymoron because in order to do it, you do have to identify those triggers. And, and tomorrow we are going to be going all over that. So remember, this is a two-part kind of a little workshop mini weekend yep. you might want to download this go to youtube download the show go to one of the talk radio listen to it again and put these two shows together because there's a lot of content here and there is a divine exquisite moment ahead of you and all you need to do is just say yes to you oh my goodness gracious and, and so this is really important Shree, because as we as we learn to shift as we learn to consciously connect and shift with the timelines that is really a blessing. It is. It is. And it, what one of the things that's magnificent is all of the uh, information, the teachings, the wisdom, and the uh, uh, channeled ensoulments, everything that we have been sharing with you for the last many years is converging at this time yeah. in a magnificent way. Yeah. And one of the things I want to underscore for you is that as we surrender into our authentic guidance and our authentic self, and that brings us to the mantra of self-ascension. Yes. <laughs> As we interrupt our patterns through spiritual practice, conscious breaths, uh, forgiveness work to let go of the Velcro of the past, as we integrate all the various tools, yeah. we gain in freedom. And we begin to lift and we've talked at every show about moving out of the third dimensional witness into the witnesser of the witness and lifting into the fifth dimensional compassion right which is for yourself and others so just play with all of this for a moment all of these things are converging yeah. to open the doorway to greater creative freedom and expansion of love and joy right now 
And the only thing that would keep you from going, yes, I'm in it, I'm doing it, <laughs> are is self-doubt, pattern triggers, old tapes, and and all of the cues out in the environment. You know, it's really a, it's it's addiction. And, it, and, it I, and I'm not saying it that as a, as a negative, I'm just saying that you're addicted, right? You're addicted to that, which gives you a sense of safety. And, and sometimes our anger makes us feel safe and empowered. And sometimes our uh, ability to control things makes us feel safe. But there is also addiction to the belief that there is something outside of your control that you need to, to really wind tightly around that's affecting you. That is an illusion because there is not anything, any one. You know, I, I want to, I always go back to Gandhi because I just adore Gandhi so much and because we're here and, and Sri and I will be going again, I think for like my fourth or fifth time to the Gandhi Memorial because it just carries such great profound uh, energy for us. But I always remember one of the quotes from Gandhi and forgive me, I'm sure I'm going to misquote it, but here's the essence of it. They can break my bones. They can take my body. They can do whatever they want, but they will not ever get me. Because the truth of who we are is an infinite, undeniable source. And when Gandhi was in jail and when he was you know, in prison so many times and, and even in his hardest moments, he would just open the Bhagavad Gita and always find something that would inspire him. And, and so sometimes we are in the jail of our own thoughts, are we not? Yeah. Sometimes we are in the jail of our own belief system. Sometimes we're in the jail of confrontation and conflict. You know, there's such an addiction to the adrenaline and the egocentric, mm -hmm. self-fulfilling energy that says, I must do, versus the opportunity to inspire yourself. So one of the ways, and, we're, and Sri and I are walking through this right now, one of the ways that you can open to the shifting timelines and be available is to be conscious of that addictive behavior. You know, I'm giggling, Sri, because uh, many of you may know that last week, uh, if you were with us live last week here at Explore the Mysteries, our show, or was it on it was what, Sunday? It was show. our Sunday show. We got, we, we got interrupted in the middle of the show. We literally, all of the power went down at Tosa Blue Mountain due to a huge lightning strike. It was down for 24 hours. And I have to admit it was adorable because there were some people at Tosa Blue Mountain going, I don't have my phone. And I'm thinking, that is just so awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is a moment where the, the recognition that all of the beautiful gifts that are around us now, especially technology, and we have an installment we're going to be releasing on that next week. All of these beautiful gifts are really entrapment if we are not aware of what they are offering us through the experience of our connection, thereby leading to the choice of how we interface. I love it. Dude, I love you. <laughs> you know, we are, we are all on a magnificent journey. And the question is, are you, are you willing to live it consciously? Right. Because consciousness is the gateway. Consciousness yeah. is what binds it all together. Right. And when we identify with the active consciousness versus identify with an identity that is a, removed, such as your personality or your body. Right. We are that if when we identify with the, the consciousness itself, there's no limit, there's no judgment, there is simply the grandeur of, of all that is. And in that grandeur, the timelines open. Yes. They yes. just they just do. And so Sri mentioned the mantra of self-ascension earlier. And I, I wanted to also remind you that when you if you want to really do this, like if you if you really want to have the gift of being able to say yes to the timeline shift and consciously look at it. Here's a very simple way you can do that. Number one, you begin with the mantra of self-ascension. I am here, I am ready, I am open, guide me. Just sit quietly. Don't use your phone, right? Just sit <laughs> quietly, find a beautiful space that supports you or put on some lovely music and put on some candles, light some incense. When was the last time you did ceremony for you? Just for you. And then 
bring a heart of smiles into you, right? Just bring hearts of smiles into you. And in that, you become the I am. And in the declaration of I am here, I am ready, I am open, guide me. The next evolution of that, which Sri and I have been sharing for a while, and we're going to be talking about a lot come December, because this is the 2020 and beyond energy, is that through the I am here, you will open your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's when we open the mind that the ego feels safe to relax and that we begin to see beyond the Hollywood illusion and notice the subtle shifts that have been happening around us. How has your life been lining up? Remember, the November 12th full moon, that illumination that is now beaming, it's permanent. It's not going anywhere. And so that means everything is out in the open. It means you can see. It also means you are filled with the opportunity to claim more light than you have ever claimed before. And, and that really, for me, is the exciting part of I am ready, right? So I am here. Open your mind. I am ready. Expand your vision. This does not mean your eyes of form. It means let go of the limiting beliefs. You know, lately we've been having a lot of people requesting uh, readings with me and healings. And, and we, we both, Shri and I, have been doing a lot of remote healings and other sessions with people lately. And the one thing that I have noticed since the November 12 full moon opening is that the ego is either celebrating that it can sit in the back seat safely and let you drive, or it's in the front seat and it doesn't know how to drive. And it's a very fascinating, those are two very interesting experiences of parallel shifts. Absolutely. Yeah. And it reminds me to remind you <laughs> that the ego is nothing more than a lens, a vehicle for control and safety yeah. in a worldly strata. Right. It's useful in density. It's part of the game. It's yeah. it's it's just part and parcel part of density. Whew. As we ascend, uh, we return to our true essence, which is why self ascension is the more accurate description of what really is going on. Yeah, well Re said. Returning to that which you are, your essence, your eternal self, and knowing it, being aware of it while you are still in form. That is the yoga of self-ascension. Yes, yes. And so just consider for a moment as we relax into this soul-based living, as yeah. we react, relax into a more cosmic backdrop for our existence, then the ego personality is not as useful anymore because it can't go out of density. Right. Whereas your true self is well beyond density. So we're constantly straddling the two for a while. And then the governance of the ego, the need of the ego to be in control begins to soften because the love and the compassion of your soul-based life provides security and safety for the ego. All of this is a little bit of a dance that takes some practice and commitment. And with a little practice and a little commitment, it becomes your true nature. So the reason I'm offering you this is to remember that the ego will at first try to grab your spirituality and manage it. Because the ego responds to fear. So the more fear that you carry, the more the ego will cling to dear life because it's food. Your, your fear is food for the ego. Your doubt is a buffet. <laughs> and, and so if you have a buffet of fear and doubt, your ego is like, I'm, 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 this is great, it's right? Got lots of no, right? It's like with. hungry, hungry hippos, right? <laughs> and, and so this brings you to the I am open yes, too, because yes. when we are open, we ignite our heart. And in this moment of illumination, what is illuminating around you? Look at where you are. Look at who you're with. Look at what you're doing. How does that resonate? Does that resonate as an ever refining spiral of ascended presence or does it resonate as a spiral of density experience? Both of those opportunities are, are wonder filled and when we offer ourselves the recognition, remember we're in the recognition moment, when we offer ourselves the recognition 
the conscious awareness of this, the, the multiples, they, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want you to think that it means you're visually going to see them open. I do. You most likely might not, but when all of those parallels open, what you will notice is the flow and you will also notice and i want to share this with you too shifting a parallel is not shangri-la we are very aware yes, of, of yes. what's going on in our parallel it's like, right? you know the other day i looked at the street and said okay so in this parallel this is what this life is going to look like and this is what's happening so i don't want you to also think that the minute you shift a parallel all your problems go away it could be quite the contrary this is why it's so important. I am here. I am ready. I am open. Guide me. And yes. what is the guide me? That's how we heal the world, guys. Because when we open our mind, when we expand our vision, when we ignite our heart, then your very presence will heal the world. When we beat on our beat with sticks and beat each other, try and to change, try to push and, and just get, you know, so worked up about all of the horrific atrocities, which will be in most of the density dimensions. So don't think that you've quote unquote failed or haven't done this. If you're seeing something in many respects, the, I know the dimension tree and I have slid into that we are coming to you with right now. In this dimension, there's plenty of horrific things happening. It's still densified, it's still a density experience. However, it is our recognition, right? It is that respect, remembrance, recognition, bringing us to our own choice. And we find it fascinating that we will be here in India for this time. As a matter of fact, we'll be in Varanasi on the 30th, that we will have our own observation of what has been placed before us. When you shift into another timeline, it's first about recognizing what's going on around you, what's lining up around you. Suddenly there might be people who just disappear out of your life that might have been in your life before because in this timeline they weren't meant to be. And that's okay. The more that you can release into that and say, oh, okay, so in this parallel, this is what this looks like. The more that you can say it, stay in that ascended recognition of what's happening, the easier you can adapt and call forward. Okay, what was, and, and this really brings us back, Shri, to I think something really important that we talked about a few months ago. How did you shift into this timeline? Hmm. What was your true sacred intention? Remember, if the intention, and, and I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, Shri and Kira, official Shri and Kira at YouTube, and I would really encourage you to go, you're gonna have to dig it out, I'll have to find it again. Maybe I'll ask our beautiful Bria to make it easily available again. We did a video on the interference symptoms, and, and, and this is a really important video. These symptoms were gifted to us through Archangel Zadkiel. They are extraordinarily powerful. But one of the signs of interference is that it was money motivated or ego motivated. Mm -hmm. So when you were looking to shift a timeline or, or a parallel, they, they really are interchangeable, guys, no matter what anybody tells you. Um, the key is that what was that deep I, not not what you tried to tell yourself remember the greatest liar is your brain right it, your ego lies to you constantly because it's a self-defeating fulfilling mechanism but what was the deep down within call go there go there i know for shri and i it was about show us where we could be of the highest service and reach as many people as possible to share the blessing of the yoga of self-ascension because Illumination is everywhere. And so we were brought into this slice right now. We're, we're, we were very strongly said, anchor here. What about you? Go back and revisit that. If you feel that you have not yet successfully anchored in the parallel that's really serving you, then get clear. And this is the, the moment to do it again, right? We're always given another option, right? Oh, yeah. The nice thing about the universe, we always get more opportunities. You know, the opportunities are always available. Yeah. And there's an important discernment I would like to share with you. So let's take a breath. Okay. <sighs> Density. Density consciousness, which is the way we uh, view the mass consciousness. It's an ego-based reality that is 
woven in a fear-based context. Okay, that's density consciousness. I almost losing and, my breath. <laughs> and it's, very, it's very me, 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 and, and it's food us, for the ego. <laughs> us versus them, and all, all of that. All of things. that, yeah. And then, as we begin to lift and, and refine, we move into uh, spiritual activism, which is more of an us versus them kind of energy, and oftentimes has a lot of heart uh, tied in with anger and, and a need to control. Yeah. Uh, and a fear that if I don't take, have my activism, then the world's going to go to hell kind of thing. Well, or that you must. Yeah. That How can you, I get so many people who yell at me and go, how can you tell us not to be activistic? You know what? When I was 19 years old in Washington, D.C., I was on TV on the Walter Cronkite show protesting what was going on in Iran at that time. It was, it was just a massive thing. And I, I'm, I know I'm dating myself, but, you know, I get it. I really get it. It's part of the journey. Yes. What what Shri and I are inviting you to also recognize as that, because remember, we're in the moment of recognition, it's a part of the journey. But when we lock in, right, when we lock in and we close down to expansion, then what we're saying is I am locking in to this dimension with, with that focus. With those polarities exactly. and those challenges. And it will get greater. And, and your ego will say, I got this. I know what we need to do. And I just need to gather more support for this point of view. Add anger to the buffet. That's dessert. So here's, here's the discernment I want you to try on, if right. you're willing, is that as we lift, we begin to recognize that density you cannot take the fear out of density. It's what's there. It's the glue that holds density together, which is and why it's getting so big right now. And that's one of the reasons, one of the ways you would know kind of where you're navigating. You cannot take the fear out of density, but you can take yourself. You can lift out of the fear. Breathe that one in. As we lift out of the fear, into, you could call it a love-based reality, but it's more than that. It, as we lift out of the fear that density begins to have its own experience and rules and, and, and repetition, and we oh begin my. to recognize <laughs> there is nothing that needs to be fixed there. Each being needs to be complete with it as they're ready in their right. own time. Yes. And each being is a being of light and love, having their density experience. Others are having their uh, uh, ascended, or excuse me, their spiritual activism. And then we move into ascension awareness, which is where we're really in the world, but not of the world. And we're offering love and forgiveness to all. And as we practice holding those zones, so to speak, holding those dimensional uh, truths, we begin to smile at all of it and recognize it's all part and parcel of the oneness that loves us and that we are of that, that love. So remember, beloveds, we do not need to fix anything other than to relax our need to control our, our addiction to fear and be what we are right. and step by step it'll get easier and easier step by step it'll be brighter and more beautiful and pretty soon it's not steps it's just flow by flow right <laughs> you know remember that adrenaline is of density and the reason i'm mentioning this is because of what you're sharing Sri. adrenaline is is what causes the addiction this is why you know all of the rides that are just you know like how how far can i scare you no. how well can we frighten you and then you're like ah Give it to me again, right? Ah, yeah. Do it again. And then you survive. You feel a sense of, I mastered the exactly. roller coaster. But you, you know? didn't master the roller coaster. What you did was you fed the energy mm -hmm. that was seeking to control you. And in the shifting timelines, and especially as we are heading toward this new moon, and remember, tomorrow's show, Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action coming to you at noon tomorrow, Pacific time, that is is when we're gonna talk about how these triggers are really a moment to pay attention to. So I wanna dive into this new moon with the shifting timelines. Yes, yes, yes. So bear in mind, what is the new moon, right? Well, we always know that every new moon is an opportunity to create. It's about celebrating that we are in that moment. I, I, Shri and I referred to it uh, because Archangel Zodkiel gave it to us one time as time out of time. Every new moon, you have this moment to kind of dance. And this is why the timeline shift is so important because this new moon, and we're already in the shadow energy of it, this new moon 
is all about a, a very strong convergence of power. It is a power convergence. So where is the power in you? Is it outside of you or is it within you? What is illuminating? What have you noticed has illuminated? And in that energy, where is the gift of the ceremony for you? I am here. I am ready. I am open. The opportunity to claim through this divine presence of true commitment to really claim that which is calling to you as far as where are you, where are you, everyone is shifting timelines and, and that's the key. Are you shifting permanently or are you making yourself crazy and trying on there? There's an infinite number guys. You can make yourself crazy. So focus, which is what Sri started talking about today. Now let's talk triggers because come this full, uh, this new moon, mm-hmm. That there's going to be, as I mentioned, this power convergence. So in the world of density, you can see some really chaotic stuff happen during this time. Uh, I mean, crazy stuff near the end of November. And this is why the divine directors at the beginning of November 2019 said, you're in a month of choice, but you wait till the very end of the month to make it. Even though you're seeing it, even though all the little pieces are there, you want to wait till after this new moon. Gather move. your resources, exactly. gather your discernments, gather the energy that's available to you so that when the time comes to anchor into a choice, you're fully prepared, fully informed, and fully resourceful. Absolutely. And as you do that, give yourself the gift. I want you to breathe this in. Let's bring our hands to our heart. So. Mm, well, that's all good. Let's do that again. <laughs> so, as you are preparing to dive into the gift of you, there are two stark energies that are before us right now. The energy of extraordinary mastery. I mean, lift off, lift off, cosmic spaceship out of this world, incredible, or intense drama, intense drama. And it, it, the way the way that the energy is presenting right now, it's a pull. So are you being pulled? Are you aware of what is pulling you? Or are you able to lift? Remember, as Sri always says, so wis- wisdomfully, you cannot play your way off this game board. You can only lift. Are you lifting into that fifth dimensional self-compassion Are you loving yourself enough? Are you able to lift and become the witness of the witness? Can you, can you hold yourself with so much love and compassion? Can you see the blessing that is being illuminated around you right now? And if the answers are no, or I don't know, then Sri and I would challenge you because you do know you are clear. There's only one thing that's stopping you. And it's that awful veil called fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. And remember, fear and doubt are nothing more than a buffet for the ego. And you throw a little anger in there and you've got a three course meal. And so what is the meal you're serving yourself right now? Is it peace, love, and joy? The, the, the mainstay of the yoga of self ascension, or is it doubt, fear, and anger? Because those are going to be the new moon energies. And they're going to be large and they are on a collision course. Meaning if your peace, love, and joy meets with this kind of doubt, anger, and fear, who is really guiding? If the master is guiding, then it's a moment of love and appreciation and melting. You actually have an opportunity to create through this new moon, the melting. Ooh, the melting. Yeah, the melting. And as we come to a close We're today, melting. <laughs> I, I just want to remind you that you're living in this holotropic or holographic, uh, call it show. And oftentimes it's very easy for one's attention to be distracted by the content. Keep coming back to the energy, the energy of love, the energy of peace, the energy of joy. And then look at the content that results when we are in those states of being. Mm-hmm. That will guide you into the higher timeline or the more uh, aligned timeline for your soul's mission right now. So, beloved ones, as we come to a close today, 
May you trust yourselves. May you breathe deeply and may you know that all is truly well. Join us tomorrow for part two. Let's get rid of those triggers. Namaste. Namaste.